Hello everyone, and welcome to your 64th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial and the next few tutorials, we're going to be having a nice little chat about the NS Gesture Recognizer classes and their various subclasses. Um, the general idea of an NS Gesture Recognizer is that it's a class that can basically recognize a particular gesture. So if I want to recognize a magnification, a pan, a rotation, any of these things, I can set up a gesture recognizer to be on a particular view, and then I'll be notified of the particular values that have changed with uh, said rotation, magnification, or translation. Now, this sort of set of tutorials that I'm going to do, uh, probably will consist of about three, are really off the beaten path for what we're allowed to do with AppKit. These are really violating a lot of the AppKit rules that are set in place. I'll talk about what I mean by that as we go through it. But just know that this is kind of an experimental little series, a little game in uh, playing around with uh, AppKit, which I think is always good to do, and I hope hope you'll enjoy uh, what's uh, th these next few tutorials anyway. So uh, with that said, I think that gives you a, a good introduction. Let's talk about what we're doing. So this is the final product that you'll see uh, in this tutorial. You'll notice if I press and hold sort of on this view, I get changes in color, which uh, is pretty simple to do. Um, we also have translation. So this is a translation gesture recognizer, right? Uh, these are all gesture recognizers. That's why I'm showing you these things. If I magnify, you'll notice that I have a magnification gesture recognizer. Um, this also is um, magnifying based on the anchor point, which is this bottom left corner here. Um, so we'll talk about that in a bit too. But uh, so basically my magnifications are based off that anchor point. You'll notice also I can do rotations. So the rotations, again, based off the anchor point. And I can magnify and do all this cool stuff as well. So. Awesome. This looks great, does it not? It does until everything kind of breaks, I guess. Um, so if I try to, for example, translate over here, you'll notice nothing happens. I can't press on the view. I can't rotate, magnify. I can't do anything. Why is this, you might ask? Well, we are actually changing all of the aspects of the core animation layer that is backing this NS view. So if I go to rotate over here in this magical little section, you'll notice I can actually still rotate and the rotations continue to work. Magnif magnifications will continue to work. Everything works as you'd expect. However, the hit, hit point of where uh, I'm you know, currently operating in is on the view, which is unfortunate. I don't really want this. Another downfall is if I try to translate, everything gets reset, which is awful, right? I don't really want that to happen. Unfortunately, it does. So why does all this crappy stuff happen? Well, basically, core animation layer is uh, the, what is backing an NS view in what we're doing here. And we are directly changing the layer aspects of the layer-backed view, which is a huge no-no in AppKit. You are never supposed to change any of, the, uh, any of the attributes really. Well, I shouldn't say any. There are some that you are allowed to change, but you are not allowed to change a lot of the core animation layer uh, properties and we are changing some of the ones that we are not supposed to change, and that's why we're getting these bad artifacts that you see. But we are going to uh, see if we can fix some of these bad AppKit aspects in the next few tutorials. So we're not going to fix those today, but uh, just know that they exist and that we, we are going to try and fix AppKit for the better. So uh, let's just begin, because I think this, this should be fun. So we're just going to drag out a custom view here. Going to resize it to be 150 by 150. Kind of just plop it here. I'm going to disable using auto layout in this tutorial. Not that it really matters, but um, just for this these purposes, I'm going to disable it just so nobody has any issues in, in terms of the view itself. Um, so just go ahead and do that. The last thing I want to do is I want to select this window, and I'm going to go to the the view uh, effects layer or uh, panel. And I want to change this window so that the Windows content view is layer backed. So by doing this little checkbox here, this is going to enable the Windows view to have a backing core animation layer. And just by enabling this, it means that all of the sub views also will get a core animation layer implicitly. So this is what I want. Uh, I want this custom view to also have a, a core animation layer backing it. And so just by enabling it on the window, it gives all the subviews 
a core animation layer as well. If you're really confused with, with what I'm saying, uh, well, it's probably okay. But if you want to know more, you can feel free to check out the core animation layer or core animation tutorials that I have uh, that explain layer backing and uh, other things as well. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and add some gesture recognizers here. So I want to add a press gesture recognizer. And you'll notice that there, there's a little list here of different things I can add. All I want to do is I just drag out these different gesture recognizers that I want. And uh, that's what I'm doing. So we've added a pan, a magnification, and a rotation. And you can see all these appear in the dock. If you don't have the dock expanded, you won't see them. So just make sure you expand the dock so you can see the different gesture recognizers that we have. OK, so how do I uh, get any information from these guys? They work off of target action, so I can just set the target to be my app delegate in this example, and then they just send an action. It works the same way as a button does. So I'm going to open up my assistant editor here. If uh, the app delegate doesn't appear, just make sure you're going under automatic app delegate. What I want to do is I want to simply control drag now from all these gesture recognizers over into my, my application delegate. So if I set the action here, make sure we, we're making the connection in action. I'm going to call this press view. And that's just because it's the press gesture recognizer. And then make sure you set the type to be the press gesture recognizer type. So connect that and you'll notice that we have that here. All right, and I'm just going to do this now for all the press gesture or all the different gesture recognizers. So go ahead and do that. And then uh, we'll catch up after the break. All right, so once you have all those actions added with their appropriate types, um, the last thing we want to do is also add an outlet for the custom view. So I'm going to control drag from our custom view and make an outlet for this. I'm just going to call it view. And this will just allow me to, to do some customization with it in the beginning, uh, which is what I want to do. So now we're done with uh, working in the nib for now. Let's just hop over to our app delegate so that we can just work on this. So what I want to do is I want to first set up our, our view so that it has a background color. And I can do this just by accessing the layer like so. And I'm just going to set the background color to be, oops. I'm just going to set it to be a red color. And I can just get the CG color, which will just uh, trans, trans, transform the NS color into a CG color because the background color uh, requires that it's a CG color. OK, so now I can check this out just to make sure that all this is working. This will just make sure that we made all the, the right setup, hopefully. You should see a red uh, rectangle on your screen. If you don't, you probably did not enable the window to have layer-backed view. Um, and that's something you need to do. So make sure make sure that is at least working as it is. OK, so let's start out with something simple. Uh, the press view is uh, probably the easiest example, right? Just the press gesture recognizer. And what I want to do when I press this is I want to generate a random color. For this tutorial, I don't want to spend any time really looking at random colors or how to implement them. So I'm just going to kind of throw in a block of code here just to speed up the, the tutorial and get to the, the real juice of or meat of the matter. But here is uh, how you can create a, a random color. This is just simply a, an extension on NS color that generates a random color for me. And I'm just going to use this now to generate a random color. So I can do the same thing that I did before NS color dot random color dot CG color. All right. So now uh, that's good. And I can go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and run our application, make sure we have what we want. If I press down on this, you'll notice that it changes color. One thing you'll notice is that if I press down, it'll change. And then it'll also change, though, when I release. So if I don't want this to be the case, maybe I just want it so that I, you know, press down, and then I will actually, you know, when I press down, it'll occur, then uh, I can check that by checking the state of the particular gesture recognizer. So I can say if sender.state you notice the state for this is an NS gesture recognizer state type. So I can say NS gesture recognizer state dot. And you can see all the different states that come with this. So we have began, canceled, changed, a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm really just concerned about the began state. So I can see when a particular thing begins. 
and that's the state that I want to check, right? So I just want to check to see that uh, we, when we began, which is when I first clicked, I want to change the background color. I can make this code a little bit simpler by deleting the enum type on that, and I'll just leave it as dot .began, works perfectly fine. It just infers the, the type from the state that it's comparing. And if I now press on this, you'll notice that the, the color will change, but it won't change when I release the mouse. So that's good. That's what I want. Um, so that's just one thing you should know is that all these gesture recognizers have a state and you can use this to your advantage to uh, check different things, right? If you only want to, if you want to do something when something ends, you can uh, check to see that the state is the ended state, right? There's a lot of uh, in, important things that you can do with that. All right, so with that, uh, anyway, that's, that's how you can use the began state. Let's talk about how we can do panning now. So panning is uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's just translating a view, and all you have to do for that is change the frame so that it uh, basically changes the origin of where the frame is of the view. Now, if you want to know what's on these gesture recognizers, they're actually pretty easy to just look at. So if I command click on this NS pan gesture recognizer, for example, you can see there's two functions here which are quite self-explanatory. Translation in view is the translation in a particular view. And there's set translation, which uh, pretty much every one of these gesture recognizers has is a way of setting the, the translation again, which I'll, I'll demonstrate in just a bit. So let's first get the translation of this particular view in the, the super view. To do this, I'm just gonna say let t, which t is just gonna stand for translation in this case. I can say sender dot translation in view. The view that I am comparing against is actually the super view. So I really want the Windows content view in this case. And I'm just going to convert it to be as an NS view because it actually is not. It is actually of any object, which I don't really understand why it is, but whatever. Um, we can just say we can cast it to be an NS view uh, regardless. So what this is going to get us, right, is it's going to get us an NS point that represents the X and Y values of the translation. So now uh, it's pretty simple to get the uh, translation for this. If I want to change the view, uh, I can actually just ask the sender for the view itself, which is actually quite handy, right? I might want to, um, I don't necessarily want to have, um, I don't necessarily want to, what am I trying to say? I don't necessarily uh, know which view I'm trying to operate on, right? So the nice thing about gesture recognizers is that if I had multiple views that all had the, the same pan gesture recognizer, they could all call the same action, right? They could all trigger this pan view gesture recognizer action, and then I can just check the view that's associated with the sender. So uh, it's a nice little option that we have to work with. So I can just say sender.view, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's an optional for you know, whatever reason, I guess it makes sense. But anyway, uh, so the sender has a view that's optional. Uh, I want to change the frame of this, and I can do that by using NS offset rect. I'll get the sender views frame. I have to use the exclamation mark in this case because it uh, has to be it has to be an object. I get the frame for that, and then I can just use the translations x and y values to translate the frame like that and it will just offset the current frame by those, those translations. The last thing that you have to do is set the translation back to a particular value. So I need to reset it so that it's NS0 point, uh, and then I can just say that the view is nil, the view doesn't really matter in this case. I wanna just set the, the, the gesture recognizer back to be a zero point. So the reason for this is that every time I get notified for this gesture recognizer, I, I, basically, the translation will start out as zero, and when it calls this action, it's saying, okay, we've moved this far from the last time I called this action, and so I can get that update. And every time I get that update, I, I want to reset the translation so that it's back at a translation of zero, so that the next time it's called, it's just giving me the, the value that it's offset the last time it called. So hopefully that makes sense why I'm resetting this to zero, but you'll see that uh, when I run this now, right, uh, it works as expected, and I am translating my view. So, perfect. Um, yeah, that's and this is pretty much the general flow of most gesture recognizers. You get the, the value that the gesture recognizer contains, you update the view, and then you reset the gesture recognizer back to its initial state. 
So let's see how this works on magnification. Uh, magnification, I can say center.magnification. In this case, I'm actually going to add uh, a value of 1.0 to the magnification. The reason for this is that magnification is based off of a, a zero scale on the gesture recognizer, so it's going to be basically negative if it's shrinking and positive if it was growing. Uh, however, when I go to apply the matrix in just a second or change the, the matrix that defines the layer, I actually want this to be in terms of one, and uh, we'll, I'll actually talk about this in just a bit. But anyway, for now, I'll just add the plus one to that. I'm gonna get the view uh, from the sender right now, so just doing that off the bat so we have the variable to work with. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna change the frames affine transform, and actually I don't wanna do that. I wanna do dot set affine transform. So what is an affine transform? Well, it's actually just a matrix. Um, and a matrix, I'm not really gonna go into matrix math, but if you wanna look this up on your own, you're perfectly welcome to. Uh, you really don't have to dive into too many details with the matrix. Uh, we're actually going to in a future tutorial when I try to fix uh, AppKit, <laughs> sort of. But uh, nonetheless, you can just think of it as defining how the view is in the world. So a matrix will essentially define a translation, a rotation, and a matrix, or sorry, and a magnification or a scale. So the, the what what the transform is really doing is it's just saying that um, based off the you know the normal position of the layer, which is just you know the standard standard what a standard view looks like, right? Based off the standard position, I could then rotate this matrix. I can I can scale the matrix or I can trans transform the matrix in some way and uh, that's what I want to do. So in this case I want to scale this matrix so that it essentially generates a larger view. And so I can do that simply by saying CG affine transform scale. I can get the layers affine transform and this is just the current affine transform property. So if I haven't changed the affine transform, it is just the identity matrix. Again, matrix math, it's not too necessary to know it, but uh, it is helpful. Uh, it's, it will be especially helpful when I try to explain matrix math in uh, the next uh, little few tutorials. But anyway, just know that for now, uh, the affine transform is just the current state of the layers sort of uh, frame positioning. And what I want to do is I want to apply, I want to apply a scale to the current transform of the matrix, and I'm going to do that with this magnification value. Now this is why I added a plus one to the magnification, because if I don't do that, basically basically a, a scale of one right means that I don't actually scale at all. So if it was less than one, it's shrinking the actual matrix values, and if it was growing, then I'm going to be larger than one, right? I'm simply multiplying the, the magnification value by the matrix. Okay, so anyway, uh, with uh, that out of the way, the last thing I have to do is not what I'm doing right now. I want to reset the gesture recognizer's magnification back to zero. And that's it. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and run this just to make sure that we've applied all this stuff properly. If I go to transform this, right, you can see that uh, magnification works like a gem. And uh, yeah, it works works as expected. So now we just have to implement the last one, which is rotation. And it works essentially the same way. Um, the rotation gesture recognizer has a rotation property, which is a rotation in degrees, or sorry, rotation in radians. There is a property for rotation in degrees, but I want it to be in radians for my matrix transformation. I can get the view off the sender, and now I'm just going to say view.layer dot set affine transform. We do sort of the same thing that we did, except this time we're applying a rotation to the transfer or to the uh, matrix. So I can say uh, view.layer dot affine transform, and we are going to apply the rotation that I got from the gesture recognizer. And of course, the last thing is to reset this to back to zero. And that's it. So that is what we have to do for our gesture recognizer. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and check this out, make sure uh, we didn't screw anything up, which I don't think we did because there wasn't too much to screw up. So here we go, we got our rotation. We can also do our, 
our magnification there. So, you know, that works. Uh, you'll notice, however, currently there, we can't do both at the same time, which is kind of annoying. So I have to, if I'm going to do a magnification, I can't now start a rotation unless I let go of the trackpad and then rotate again. Uh, that's also something I totally forgot to mention was that all this stuff is <laughs> based off the, the trackpad, but hopefully you, you figured that out by now. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's what we got for this. Um, yeah, uh, that's what we have. Let's go back into this. So uh, what we want to do now is fix that so that we could actually have more than one gesture recognizer happening at a time. To fix this, we need to tell all these gesture recognizers that we are going to be the delegate for these gesture recognizers. And the NS gesture recognizer delegate has a method on it that allows you to specify if you can allow simultaneous gestures. And that's what we want to allow. So I just need to set all of these gesture recognizers to have me, the app delegate, as their delegate. And we're just going to be the NS gesture recognizer delegate. And one of the methods on this, like I was just saying, is gesture recognizer should recognize simultaneously with gesture recognizer. Uh, of course, it's a delegate method, so it's really wordy. But basically what it's saying is, given this gesture recognizer and given this other gesture, rec other gesture recognizer, can these occur at the same time? And in this case, I'm just going to say, yeah, sure, why not? So you could have some other logic in here if you want to dis disable these sometimes. But in this case, I just always want it to be true that both gesture recognizers can uh, happen simultaneously. All right, so here's my view. I can rotate and magnify sort of at the same time, right? And I don't have to, I don't have to lift my, my mouse to actually have both occur. So that's good. All right, so that, that uh, concludes the tutorial. We're back to uh, that cool example that I showed you in the beginning, uh, but obviously with a lot of issues. So that's it. Uh, in the next few tutorials, we're going to go dive in, into some really deep Objective-C-ish stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll still use Swift for it, but it's actually a lot of uh, Objective-C technically. So yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions on gesture recognizers, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And I will see you in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.